Thank you all for coming. So in this talk today, I will try to kind of paint a picture of what I'm working on. So I hope you will give me some artistic freedom in favoring a clear picture before precise statements. So I'm currently working on two projects in parallel. The first one is about Fourier coefficients uh, of automorphic forms, and that's together with Dimitri Gurevich, Axel Kleinschmidt, Daniel Passion, and Siddhartha Sai. The second project is about uh, Whittaker functions, uh, Pianic Whittaker functions on metaplectic covers of TLR, and those are related to soluble lattice models and quantum groups, and that's with Ben Brubaker, Valentin Bukumas, and Daniel Baum. So if you're interested in any of these or related topics, we'd be very happy to talk. But today I will focus on only the first project because of time constraints. So let's start with the core of the problem of the difficulties of computing these Fourier coefficients. So we all know how to Fourier expand a periodic function on the real line or in any abelian uh, uh, space Rn. But how do we ex uh, expand a function phi on, for example, the Heisenberg group, which we denote by n here, which are the 3 by 3 uh, matrices of a triangular, and this is non-abelian. But first, what does it mean to be periodic on this group? Well, we say phi is periodic if it's invariant on the left translations of these integer matrices gamma here, like this. So let's call the argument here G, and we note that the non-commutativity here appears in the upper right corner in the center. So simply expanding phi in x, y, and z using these Fourier modes does not work, because these Fourier modes are invariant on the translations in um, integer shifts in x, y, and z, but y, uh, phi is not. So what we do? Uh, we start by first expanding in only z. So we start with the center, and phi can be uh, written as this Fourier series here, where we sum over modes k over Fourier coefficients f, which are this uh, period integral here, where we can take the integral to be from 0 to 1 of this z prime and the Fourier mode over there. But we note, if we look at the constant term, the k equals 0 mode, that this can be expanded further. It is, in fact, invariant on the shifts in x and y. And this is because we have the freedom of shifting the int integration variable z prime. So we can separate this into the constant term, the k equals 0 mode, and the remaining modes, and Fourier expand the constant term like this in x and y, where the new Fourier coefficients here uh, look like this, where we integrate over the whole of n, all the up triangle matrices, but the Fourier modes only depend on the x and y. So this is a full expansion of the function phi. Let us take a closer look at this Fourier coefficient. We can upgrade it to be more group theoretical, so we replace the, uh, the domain by this period of n and replace the modes by this so-called character here. We can also make a number theory upgrade by replacing z with q and r with the adults. Now this particular Fourier coefficient, where we integrate over the whole of n, all the upper triangular matrices, it's got a special name. It's called a Whittaker coefficient and is denoted by W. There are other Fourier coefficients with special names. So here we had the one where we integrate over the whole of n, all the upper triangular. If we take a different unipotent subgroup, for example this one, uh, the corresponding Fourier coefficient is called maximal parabolic. And I'll show here some other examples for a larger group, where we take these unipotents instead, the also maximal parabolic. 
So we are now seeing how we can do Fourier expansions on groups, what the difficulty are, uh, difficulties are, and we've seen some different kinds given some special uh, kinds of Fourier coefficients and their names. So let's get back to the goal of this project, which is to compute Fourier coefficients of automorphic forms. Well, an automorphic form is kind of like a generalization of modular forms or function, but for high rank groups. More specifically, an automorphic form is a function on g of a, which is left invariant under the discrete subgroup g of q. It also has some um, smoothness, finiteness, and growth conditions, uh, but they won't be important here today. So why do we want to compute these Fourier coefficients? Well, historically, modular forms, the Fourier coefficient of modular forms, have been studied for the ability to count interest, interesting objects in, in uh, number theory. So for example, we have the Jacobi theta function, or the specialization thereof. If you take it to the kth power, it has this Fourier expansion, or Q-series expansion, where the coefficients are these rk, which are the number of integer solutions to this square sum equation of k terms. And this was first studied in examples by Jacobi already in 1829. This project is motivated by the fact that some automorphic forms contain, contain information about so-called non-perturbative quantum effects in string theory. And their Fourier coefficients count, for example, quantum states of black holes and so-called instantons. This was first discovered by Green and Goodperl in 97, and this work and subsequent work can, uh, uh, is reviewed, for example, in our book from 2018. But let me specify by what, by what I mean, what I mean by some automorphic forms. I mean uh, automorphic forms in uh, so-called small automorphic representations of simply laced groups. The simply laced groups we can see here, the thinking diagrams of type A, D, and E. And by automorphic form in a small representation, we can think of as being restricted by certain differential equations. The defining property is that they have very few non-vanishing Fourier coefficients. We recall that the Fourier coefficients have a character, the mode, and the character can be parametrized by a nilpotent element in the Lie algebra of G. The nilpotent orbits have a partial ordering, and it's this partial ordering that allows us to talk about a minimal and next to minimal representation. So that's where the words come from. Okay. So Many of these Fourier coefficients of automorphic forms are difficult to compute directly, just taking the integral. But we do know how to compute these special kinds, the Whittaker coefficients, on the uh, whole of n, the upper triangular matrices, for example. But what we want to compute are these maximal parabolic uh, Fourier coefficients, which have information, for example, about black holes. And this is very difficult. So the strategy is, when possible, to write the Fourier coefficient we want to compute in terms of the known ones, the Whittaker coefficients. But first we need to know when this is possible. And this is what we talk about in theorem one of our paper from 2018. So here we show that it is possible for exactly for those cases that we are interested in. So it's possible for the cases we are interested in from string theory and for the other cases we give the set of coefficients that would replace the w up here. So the set of coefficients we would need to be able to express parabolic Fourier coefficients and they are called Levy distinguished coefficients. What do I mean by other cases here? Well, the setup is any number field, any center extension of reductive group, and any representation. So now we know it is possible. The follow-up paper 
we describe how. So we give general formulas for doing exactly this, expressing the maximum parabolic Fourier coefficients and actually automorphic form itself in terms of this Whittaker coefficients that we know. So I won't be able to give the, the full formulas here, but let's take an example. S of phi phi. We take the automorphic form to be next to minimal. We take the unipotent subgroup to be analogous to what we had as the first row in the previous examples. And we remember that the character was specified by a nilpotent element in the Lie algebra, which we take to be in the minus alpha von eigenspace. And this is uh, in a, a minimal nilpotent orbit. Then the associated Fourier coefficient on this unipotent with this character is expressed like this for next to minimal representation. First, we have a, what is called a maximal degenerate Whittaker coefficient, so it looks like a Whittaker coefficient for SL2. Then we have a sum over translated Whittaker coefficients supported on uh, two orthogonal simple roots, so it looks like Whittaker coefficients on SL2 times SL2. These forms, do they have to be uh, They do not have to be. But for Eisenstein series, it, we can plug in directly what the Whittaker coefficients are. Yes. Yes, for the application on string theory, they are Eisenstein series. Very good, thank you. <coughs> Very good. So when we uh, consider instead a minimal representation, only the first term survives. So let's summarize. We talked about Fourier expansions, different kinds of Fourier coefficients corresponding to different unipotent subgroups. We have these known Whittaker coefficients out of a box. Uh, we want to compute the maximal parabolic Fourier coefficients, which tells us about black holes, for example. Theorem 1 tells us that it is possible to write these ones in terms of those. That's theorem 1. And theorem 2 tells us exactly the formulas how to do it. So in the future, we would like to insert the known expressions for the Whittaker coefficients, evaluate the extra integrals that appear in the relations, evaluate all the Euler products, uh, etc., and extract the physics content. I'd also like to get a generalization two for non simply lace case. Remember, theorem one tells us that the parabolic Fourier coefficients can be determined in the so-called limit distinguished coefficients, but we have no formulas yet. Lastly, we'd like to use the framework we have to study Eulerianity, how the, the Fourier coefficients factorize for different types, and also local uniqueness theorems. Thank you very much. Thank you.